Hello and welcome back to Vampire. My name is Emma and this is Once Upon a Quest. In this episode, it's going to be a little bit different because I just want to kind of focus on doing some side quests. So I'm going to go around and do some of the local investigations and um, yeah, just focus on kind of other little things that I wanted to kind of finish up before continuing on with the main quest. Uh, so next episode is where we're going to pick up with the main quest of going to rescue Dr. Swansea. So for now, let's do some side quests and local investigations and see where it takes us. So let's go. What is in this door? Wait, I've never been in this door before. Where's this? See, this is, this is what I want to do. I want to just like explore a bit more before I <laughs> do other stuff. Abandoned investment property. Where is this? I don't know. I just found this place. Abandoned, abandoned investment property. And there's a blood trail going in here. <gasps> Who is that? Oh, that's somebody unknown. I can spy on him, it looks like, too. Is he in here? It's locked, all right. It's locked. Okay, there must be a way I can get... Cadigan, get away from me. Okay, okay. There must be a way I can get in there. Because I want to spy on him. Okay, there's two... Why haven't I locked on? Okay, I hear him. He's downstairs. You see, sounds like he's having a conversation with that other scout. Let's just loot up here before we jump down there. Before we do that. Petition letter. Petition letter, here we go. Uh, Mr. Bates must stop. For months, for years maybe, Cadogan Bates has exploited us. Mr. Bates must stop. If we had more money or proper jobs, we would never rent any of his extortionate flats. Mr. Bates must stop. We all know what revolting solution he proposes to the women who can't pay the weekly rent. Mr. Bates must stop. Let's meet him together soon and demand for an immediate change. Oh, so Mr. Bates is a bad landlord. Maybe, so now maybe his tenants have turned into skulls. <laughs> He's probably getting his due. Um, but it looks like I could spy on him, but I think I have to go downstairs where he is. Oh, hang on, I see more money over here. So if I drop down here... Linker Skull. How do I how do I spy on him? Maybe I have to kill the Blinker Skull first. Yeah. I thought that the glowing thing on his heart meant that I could spy on him, but I didn't seem to be able to do that, but anyway, it's okay. We've killed the Blinker Skull, which was probably one of his tenants. <laughs> and I guess now we can decide if we're going to rescue him. Hello? Adigan Bates, eh? What? What happened? Who are you? It's all right, sir. You're safe now. You're safe oh, now. A fellow Englishman. Thank you, sir. For a moment, I thought those bloody heathens would kill me. What are you doing here? This place is not oh. safe. Yeah, it's a cesspool, but it's mine. I came to collect some overdue rent, but those who still live here have gone completely bonkers. You're very lucky to be alive. Yeah, filthy immigrants. Fucking savages, every one of them. And now with this bloody fever, they're just animals. You can find safety of sorts in Whitechapel. If you're quick and cautious, you'll be able to avoid the savages. Yeah, they're like 
they're they're not I mean they're they're like vampire scals, okay, Mr. Man. They're not like just beaverish. Okay, you have a cold. I could cure him. Can I cure him? Or no, I've rescued him now, so I have to wait till he goes back to his regular his regular place, uh, before I can heal him, I guess. Okay, that's okay. Ooh, we got a um, Another letter. More braille. Oh yes, braille. I should bring this to Mason Swanborough. Excellent. So I think there's only one braille letter left for me to find. Maybe I need to bring them back to him every time. Okay. Well, he's not too far. He's up in this corner, so I can kind of go around this way. And I'm also looking for uh, Shaoshun, the widow in the graveyard, because. She also has a cold and I'd like to heal her. But the problem is I don't know where where she lives in Whitechapel or what her normal hangout spot is when she's not in the cemetery. So we'll have to maybe look around for her a bit. Okay, Mason Swanborough, here we are. And I've got some braille notes for you. Good evening, Mr. Swanborough. Is it you, Dr. Reed? Please come in. What kind of gentleman pays visits to people at this late hour? Okay, I think I've got three. What can I do for you, Doctor? For him. Uh, here's another page of the diary. I found another page of the diary, Mr. Swanborough. This diary is still not complete. The man who wrote it claims he is a member of some scholarly brotherhood called the St. Paul's Stole. Really? I've oh. heard of them. Very capable scientists. Perhaps the man who wrote this really found a cure. I would need more pages to figure it out, but it's as promising as it is intriguing. Mm. Okay, and I have another page. Here you Here go. Here is another page of the diary we were talking about. Ah, now we're talking. Ingredients, dosages, dangers and side effects. This is it. Is the diary complete now? No. The author tested his work in a hidden laboratory. You must find out where it was. Please, Isn't find me more pages, Doctor. Cool. Okay, so I think there's one more page we need to find. And there's a hidden laboratory somewhere. It's cool. Goodbye, that's, Mr. Swan. That's it for now. I'll leave you now. There's not like a particularly obvious place that they tend to be in. Like, one time I just found one on... A scald's body and another time I found one in some random building and another time just there I found it in that room after we talked to Adigan. so I don't know where the last one is going to be this is my territory damn it <laughs> oh, mine <laughs> Somewhere in this area. And oh yeah, and we're gonna go and eat the priest because he's a bold, bold man. Oh Jesus. Emilia, you scared the shit out of me. Jesus. Oh, there's the poet. I was gonna eat you as well. But made flesh, you're not so bad. You're not so bad. I'll leave you alone. I know how we can get some blood. <laughs> well, the priest, if it isn't yourself. You are blind. Good evening. So Mr. this priest, Whitaker. for context, because it's been a few son. episodes since we talked to him, so he's been going around throwing petrol on people and burning them entrance. if they're sick, which is terrible. And yeah, he sounds a bit mad, really. But so we have all the details for him, and he's at full XP. So I think we just um, just have a little snack. It's time. Okay. He's a bad man. He's burning people alive. Disgusting. Right, where are we going? Down here. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see. Father Tobias Whittaker is just going for a little evening stroll to atone for all of his sins. Yeah. I've been looking forward to eating him such a long time mm. please forgive me my lord 
for my eyes were blind to the devil in front of me. My task will remain unachieved. Oh, look, Tobias is lighter. <sighs> yeah, he was he was pretty much planning on like burning I don't know if he's planning on like burning down the whole of London or just burning sick and infected people and I don't know if he was also burning just like people he thought were um, sinners or something as well. Like it just seemed very, very dangerous. Oh yeah, we can see if we can find. Uh, there's another little quest that we had to find a good restaurant for somebody in the West End. So we could try and do that. So there's a couple of different areas to look. So um, just we yeah, will try and do that. I don't know how we're going to find a restaurant that's open in these in these times, but um, can I jump up here? Yeah, so in this area. Oh, is there a person? Unknown person? Oh! Who's this unknown person? Are you from Ascalon? Oh Jesus. I don't care. Oh god. Oh, I've no blood. Okay, I need some blood. Need that blood. There's somebody in here, it looks like. Hello? Oh, a person. Hello, who are you? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Do you need help, sir? I think I'm fine. Imura. Well, oh, he's the missing jailer? person that Be the careful. detective was looking for. He's as vicious as he is strong. You don't have to worry about him anymore. What happened here? I am Tadao Kimura. I was imprisoned by this lunatic for several days. All oh, right. I thought I was going to die here. You're not going to die now, Mr. Kimura. If you hurry, you should be able to get home safely. It seems that I owe you my life. You have all my gratitude, Dr. Reed, since it is the most precious thing I possess. Nice one. Okay, so, yeah, so the detective was looking for this guy. Goodbye, Mr. Kimura. That's good Take that we care. found him. Yeah, so the vampire outside seemed to be keeping him in here for some reason. Um, yeah, I don't know why. What was he planning on doing? I'm not sure. Maybe he wanted it. Oh, another collectible. I think that's the last collectible I need. Heresy of the Pure Blood. Pure Blood, we know the expression. We heard it in the foul mouth of the heretics and the foreign barbarians, used used it sometimes ourselves. But do we really know what it means? A vampire born from an immortal belly. What a disgusting idea. How would such a creature find its place among the livings? What would it what would be its purpose? Ours is clear, gentlemen. Ascalon is here to protect the Empire and all its citizens. We are the protectors and the shepherds, even when sometimes sacrifice, uh, even when sometimes sacrifice a sheep for our sustenance. Whoever will be found guilty of succumbing to the desire of breeding a mortal child shall be eradicated. Okay, so the Ascalon Club, it seems like, are against vampires trying to reproduce. Okay, so we need to look for 
restaurant. Ooh, is that a chocolate shop? <gasps> oh, chocolate shop. It's locked. <sighs> it's dirty handprint. Bloody handprint. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. These shadowy guns are so fast. Yep. Okay, we got him. We got him. So... This... Yeah. We were here before because we found a braille note in one of these shops. I think I was in this one. Yeah, I was in this one in the tailor's shop. We found a braille note over here on this person. And... So now we're looking for restaurants. We found a... What is this? Oh, the blind gourmet's menu. A restaurant where the guests are blindfolded before being seated. Intriguing. Oh, so it's a blind tasting? Interesting. Today's menu, entrees, guess what? Mystery plate, exquisite flavours, main courses, tasteful surprise, wonderful savours, refined curiosity, desserts, sweet mystery, hot and cold surprise, palate revolution. Forewarning, all our customers are blindfolded before sitting at their table. They are invited to use all their senses to enjoy their meals, except their sight. So could this be the place for your man, Calhoun Russell? Looks like it. It's updated so I can go back and tell him about it. And then there was another quest to do, which was to find... Um, oh, I can report back to Clarence as well. Good, because I found all the collectible notes. And then find Emily's house. Looking for... Oh, and we found out that... Um, oh, this is my house? We found out that my friend... So Crosley, apparently his wife has been poisoning him. Uh, we f yeah, we found out a clue from someone that his wife is poisoning him. I don't know. So we need to go and talk Good to him evening, about that. Good evening, Dr. Reed. A great night, what? Yes, I found your restaurant. I have found a restaurant that could satisfy you, Mr. Russell. The most intriguing and exotic restaurant in London. Really? You have piqued my interest. Where is it? It's a place where you eat in complete darkness and try to identify your meal without anything but your palate. My, oh my, how interesting. It could even be fun to eat a little poisson et fruit that way. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dr. Reed. Chips. Please, have this for your research. Um, he just pronounced that so weird. Okay, great. Can we, do we have any other hints for you? Oh, there's Crosley. Yeah, we need to talk to you, Remember. sir. We need to talk to you Good about evening, two different things. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. Your wife is killing you. Here are the documents you wanted These are the documents first. you wanted me to look for. I think I've gathered all the available occult research about vampires. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Oh, that'll help me separate the myths from the facts. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you can consider this material factual. But it's yours now. What do you intend to do with it? First, I'm going to show them to Venus. It'll open her eyes and make her understand the importance of my mission. Cool. Can we ask you anything new? Oh, we can. Your wife is poisoning you. Venus is poisoning you, Clarence. She wants you dead. So she really hates me that much now. My poor wife. I had no idea my research would drive her to such extremes. Yeah, I'm that's, sorry. that's crazy that she's trying to kill him. Why you tell me that? Just because he's obsessed with First you vampires. return from the dead, and now you tell me my wife is trying to murder me. Does he not believe me? You're my friend. You're a stupid bastard, but you're my friend, Clarence. And I don't have many left. I don't want you to die. Not like that. But I love her. I love my wife. Did I make her suffer that much? Have I become such a burden? So you have no suspicions about her at all? Nothing in Venus's behavior has seemed odd since you returned. Frankly, it's my behavior that's been odd. Ever since I got back from the war, she accuses me of being paranoid and delusional. Aw, but you're right, there are vampires. Clarence, 
Tell me about the vampire you saw in France. I was enjoying oh, my yeah. leave in Rouen. Forgot about that. I left the bar, took a shortcut back to the barracks. I saw it in a back alley. An officer in a stained uniform, biting into a soldier's neck. I don't want to accuse him of being drunk, but it's the only only way to see where this conversation goes. You were drunk, weren't you? Are you sure these two men were not just kissing? Please don't insult me, Johnny. I hid, and I saw him leave. Then I saw the body, drained of all blood. I've seen the same marks here in London since I've returned. Yeah, so I want to know, did this all originate in France? Or, like, who is this vampire he saw in France? Who is this? Your life in London. Anything else we can ask? No. That seems to be all the hints for now. You need some rest, Clarence. Maybe if we you go talk to the to wife see. next, and then we can maybe find out some more stuff. I think it might be... Oh, is it this house, actually? Is it this one? Yeah, I think so. Hello, Venus. Hello, yes. Jonathan. Please, mm. come in. We have to talk to you about poisoning your husband. Maybe we can eat her. At this app. What do you need from me, Jonathan? Stop killing your husband. He's my friend. Did Clarence recently show you documents that prove the existence of vampires? Yes, he did. And he also told me you spent a few nights gathering research for him. Oh, she's mad at Seriously, me. <laughs> why feed his obsession like that? Because it's my true. Friend. I thought it might help him rest instead of going outside at night. Tell me, what are your thoughts about vampires? Gibberish and poppycock. Dracula was a good book, but these documents were just mumbo jumbo. I burnt them all as soon as Clarence went outside again. Oh, she burnt them? Dude, I spent ages collecting all those. Okay, uh, oh, we can ask her loads of stuff. Why do you and Clarence argue so much about his obsession with vampires? Why are you poisoning him? Why do you and your husband argue so much? He is not the kind man I married and loved. He is obsessed now. Obsessed with chimeras. I feel trapped. It just makes me want to scream. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Clarence's obsession with vampires. It drives me to so kill him, crazy, though. it makes my stomach hurt. I was so relieved to have him back. But I quickly realized he'd lost his mind in France. I understand your irritation, Venus. But you have to accept the trauma Clarence endured on the battlefield. The question is simple, Jonathan. Is my husband mad? Yes or no? Do no. vampires exist? Or is Clarence a lunatic? They exist. And then she'll just think I'm crazy anyway. You don't believe him? What do you think of him? You don't believe him? So you don't believe Clarence? If poor Mary, bless her soul, had tried to convince you of the existence of bloody vampires, would you have believed her? Seriously? Mm. <laughs> Before or after I made her into one? Ha ha ha. I... To be fair, I probably wouldn't have believed if this was before all this happened. I probably wouldn't believe someone telling me. But still, though, you don't have to poison your husband to kill him because he believes in vampires. The important question is, what do you really think of your husband? I'm tough, Jonathan. He should have told me the horrors he witnessed, however appalling it was, instead of inventing a fantasy about blood-drinking monsters. Oh boy. Why are you poisoning him then? Why are you poisoning your husband? He has spent a fortune printing his bloody papers. I can't stand this nightmare anymore. We are the butt uh, of everyone's jokes so he since spent he returned. Money. If you're so frustrated by Clarence's behavior, why don't you just leave him? I have already lost the best years of my life because of him. I will not jeopardize my future for some lunatic. He goes and I inherit what's left. Okay, so it's all about the money then. I have to tell Clarence, I was the best man at your wedding. I cannot let you kill your husband. I cannot let you kill your husband, Venus. This madness is more insane than his obsession. What are you going to do? Report me to the police. I did my research too, Dr. Reed. I could the eat you. The substance I use is undetectable. Don't press your luck. 
And did you see Clarence's state of mind? What would become of him if left alone? Yeah, well... So, you're gonna kill him. The only way I can stop her is killing her. But then, but then, so, because then Clarence would be very upset if I, if I killed her, if she's dead, because he loves her even though she's poisoning him. But then if I don't kill her, she's going to kill him. So, I'm going to kill her. Clarence is my friend. <laughs> Come on, Venus. I'll show you. Vampires are real. Mmm, delicious. I danced with you at my wedding, Jonathan. What have you become? You were killing the husband from that same wedding. Excuse me. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, this one, this one was tough because he's obviously going to be really upset that his wife is killed. Killed by a vampire, so it's going to fuel, probably fuel his investigations. And make him even more obsessed. But if I didn't get rid of her, then she was going to poison him to death. So... Although I suppose, I mean, I told Clarence, so he could have probably just left her. Oh, maybe, oh yeah, maybe that was the other option. Maybe I didn't need to kill her. Oops. Um, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that then. Okay, let's read her diary. Venus's journal. I spent the last day and night crying, crying tears of joy. I did not know bliss could be so painful. My Clarence just wrote me. He is back from the war, alive and unharmed. He will be at home in two weeks. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see my beloved husband again. Clarence's attitude still worries me. He is not the same since he came back. The first few weeks, I thought it was just the necessary adjustment period, but his behaviour seemed to be more and more erratic. Nowadays, he spends all his time outside, day and night, searching for evidence. He does not care about the flu. He does not care about me. He is starting to frighten me. I can't believe this. Clarence has spent half his pension to print some stupid leaflets he now wants to freely give away in the neighbourhood. People are starting to laugh at me. Now he wants to organise some public lecture in a recently closed theatre to warn people about the presence of evil creatures in London. Free entry, of course. My husband may have come back unharmed from the war but I'm afraid he lost his mind over there. Clarence just confessed he has not spent half of his pension, but all of it, plus some of our savings. Paper and inks cost so much because of the war, he said, but it is a cost we must, must pay. People openly mock us now. I don't know what to do. Today, the butcher, Mr Galway, sent me the monthly fee and requested payment in full. He also told me he now demand, demands to be paid each time we buy some meat from his shop. No more credit. The baker asked the same thing two days ago. First, I thought it was a new policy because of the restrictions and the epidemic, but it seems my friends still have financial arrangements from the same shop. I was so ashamed I could not speak. We can't keep on like this. Clarence is completely mad. He is spending all the money we have, and I don't see how to stop him. Sometimes I wish, I wish he did not come back from the war. Oh. Yeah, she was really struggling with that. Maybe I should have not killed her and just gone back to Clarence. Oh, maybe got a bunch of stuff from her, from her safe there. Oh yeah, look at this. We got a, got a new recipe. Man, maybe that was the wrong thing to do. But I just, I don't know. I just thought if she's going to, Kill him, so I, I chose him over her. Oh no. Oh, what's up here? Anyway, I should go back and talk to him now. 
but I, I want to explore what's in here. No invitation is needed to enter this building. That can't be a good sign. Is this enemy? No house? sign of a struggle. It seems Charlotte's friend knew the yeah, killer. Charlotte's friend. Him. So this is Emily's house. Oh, look, there's blood here. Blood. I should follow the trail. Okay, before we do that, let me just finish looting here. And then there was a diary or a letter here. Emily's love letter. My dear Jacques, I can't wait to see you again. Tonight, tomorrow, I can hardly wait. Since we kissed on that bridge while the moon was so bright in the night sky, I want to feel your teeth again on my lips. Oh, the excruciating pain of your sweet bite on my neck, you devil you. For the longest second ever, I feared you were going to kill me right there on the bridge in the middle of the night. But no, my dear Jacques, you remained the delicate fiancé I know you are, and you were only teasing me. I can't wait to drink your blood for good this time and come back to my sweet friend Charlotte as an immortal to play with her a little if, at first, of course, like you taught me how to play with mortals. And then I'll turn her into one of us too and we will rule the Knights of London and cleanse the city of its impure souls. Faithfully always, Emily. Oh my God, Emily wants to be a vampire. Emily wanted to become a vampire. Something must have gone wrong. Someone is responsible for this mess. But who? Okay, so the blood trail goes down here. Okay, so Emily was planning on being a vampire and then coming back to turn Charlotte. And so Charlotte is Lady Ashbury's daughter. So we were investigating um, where was Charlotte's friend Emily, which is uh, what this quest is. But yeah, so we're trying to find Emily. What? Okay, so the blood trail goes we're over here and then there's a skull and then the blood trail goes where then? Is this the blood trail? Is that Jack? Oh my god, is that Emily? Can I talk to him? Who are you? Oh what no. are you doing here? Did I could he ask her? you the same question. I'm the Marquis de Bois Colomb, and I strongly invite you to find your own game, sir. I intend to do so very soon, thank you. But for the moment, I'd like to shed light on the death of a young woman killed by a vampire. A young woman killed by a vampire? Oh <laughs> you're joking, right? Oh, I do love the British sense of humor. So, did he intend to try and turn her, or was he just messing with her, I wonder? I followed the blood trail. Who are you? And who exactly are you? I am Jacques-Michel Guillaume Florimond, the Marquis de Bois-Colombe. Well, At your service, what a mouthful of a name. Cousin. Okay, uh, dear cousin. Dear cousin, are we related? We could be of the same blood, my dear. I tend to consider all Econs as family, don't you? Well, no, most of them tried to kill me, actually. Are you French? Obviously. You're French, but your English is quite good. I was born in France, sir, but I consider myself a traveller of this world. Mm, so many countries, so many tantalising tastes. Mm -hmm. uh, what what, what are, you are you doing, doing here? here? I doing recently here? decided just to visit London. Killing Emily for no I've reason. I always dreamed of visiting a city on the verge of collapse. Such a delicate yet intense spectacle. Mm -hmm. You take pleasure in others' misery. You take pleasure from others' misery. I have been a totally depraved and immoral creature since the day I was reborn, sir. Fair and enough. probably before. Hmm. What do you plan to do here? Take pleasure. Take pictures. Enjoy the show. Have fun. Have fun in the end Believe of the world. Me, I won't be the only foreign immortal who bought a ticket to the fair. Okay, I followed the blood trail though. I followed the trail of blood from her room to here. Oh, you're referring to that young woman. Yes, the meeting turned messy. 
I'm afraid I ruined my last ready good. So you admit you murdered her? I admit nothing, my good sir. I only regret the blood of that girl staining my clothes. Oh, blood can be so messy. So it's just happened? an accident? She wanted to become one of us. Not the first time I have received such a proposal, but... Uh, I must admit her direct approach tempted me. And then what? The body rejected my blood. It happens, you know. Okay, Sometimes so he did try. Voluntary prey. At least her gurglings brought me some fun. Oh. Until the artery burst. Oh my god. I believe you. I believe you, sir. Emily's diary confirms your statement. Oh, Emily was her name. Quite charming. Well, mystery solved then. I yes, didn't even know her I name. so. You can go. And so can you. Farewell, sir. May you enjoy the spectacle of this fallen city as much as I do. Oh, he's not a good person. Can I fight him? Wow, he's probably going to be just going around causing havoc in London, really. I wonder, can I kill him, do you think? Oh. No, I guess I missed the... My only chance was in the dialogue option was to tell him he deserved to die. Well, that's okay. Maybe we'll see him again sometime. Um, so we can go back and tell... <clears throat> We can go back and tell Charlotte what happened. Oh yes, and we need to talk to Clarence as well. Let's talk to Clarence, because I just Good murdered evening, his Doctor. wife. Are you alright? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. I don't know if I should have done that, but um Your financial situation. Do you realize you are ruining your family, Clarence? Yeah. Don't you see the risk here? Money isn't important. Not important when it is a matter of life and death. That is what my dear Venus cannot understand. Well, I can't believe she's I'm dead telling now. you this. But if warning people is that important to you, why not choose a more efficient way to spend your money? Don't you think I tried? I knocked at every door, went to every bank, I even tried to be published. No, Jonathan. This is a one-man war. People will laugh at you if they don't already. Think about your wife and your position. Think about your future. I understand my wife's embarrassment, but she's gossips sad. don't she's kill, vampires now. do. There'll be no future if people don't open their eyes. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Okay, I'm back. I just had to change a battery. So we are going to go report back to Charlotte about what we found out about her friend Emily. And then I think we'll stop it then after that. Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Good evening. It's probably a bad evening, actually, because Emily's dead. I have dead. found out what happened to your friend, Emily. I can handle the truth. There's no need to hide the bloody details. Your friend was planning to become a vampire. She thought she'd met an honest one and made a deal with him. Unfortunately, Emily did not survive the process. My mother told me many times about the risks of being turned and suspected she exaggerated the danger to avoid me being tempted. No, the risk is real. Have you any idea what a body has to endure to become an organism entirely consumed by its need to process Yeah, I forgot that Charlotte blood? wanted to be one as well. To Emily about vampires. I never thought she'd actually try it without me. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Here, take this for your discretion. Maybe this would change her mind. Oh, a new steak. Uh, wait, hang on. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. 
Yeah, I probably will, but let me see what you just gave me there. You gave me a cool steak. And it's a perfect one, so it's already fully upgraded. Oh, but we could um, make it even better. Because I would definitely prefer a steak to a gun, I think. Um, although it only does... Wait, it does 35 stun damage. And then if I do this, it decreases stamina by 10%. And this would add the stun. I'm not really a fan of the guns, so I'll do that. I'll do the stake. So if I'm not, so I'm, I'm usually using my two-handed weapon, my perfect mace. But if I switch out to something else, then I have this awesome saber. Newton's Sabre, which is fully upgraded, and now I have Charlotte's Stake, which is a perfect weapon as well, which I can upgrade at a workbench. I have a ridiculous amount of XP as well, so I should really level up soon, but I'll probably do that next episode. All the investigations, I think, now, except for this one, which is the same place we're going to go for the main quest, so I'm going to leave that for the next episode. And then this is in Southwark, which is a different area, so I'll leave that probably for another episode as well. And... That's all the investigations here. And then it's just looking for that last braille note, which I'm not sure where that is. But yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm happy with the progress with the side quest that I have made this episode. And I'll end this episode here. Next episode, we will continue doing a probably the main quest. Uh, we'll probably go rescue Dr. Swansea. Uh, and then I have a ridiculous amount of XP, so I'll probably level up first before I go rescue Dr. Swansea in the next episode and spend all of this delicious XP. I mean, 27,000 XP is what I have right now. It's the most I've ever had. So I feel like I'm going to be super strong after I level up. And then, yeah, so we'll do that next episode. We'll continue on with the main quest. I just am really happy that I got, kind of got to do some more exploring and tidy up some of the loose ends and do the local investigations uh, this episode. So it was a, a little bit more of a slower paced, probably episode where we were just kind of doing some side quests. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed it. And next episode, we'll pick up for the main story quest and a big level up. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then. Thank you.